Color Finality Pro packs advanced color tools way beyond built-in color grading capabilities to make your videos stand out. In the 2.13 update, native Fun Cut Pro masks can now be used with a plugin. However, there are some nuances, and this video will guide you on exactly how to use them. To use a native masks feature, you'll need two clips, one that serves as the mask source, and another on which the color finale effect is applied. Note, for this to work correctly, all project files in Final Cut Pro, including the source footage used for masking, must have the same frame rate. But, if you have multiple frame rates on a timeline, the way to make it work is to create compound clips inside the media browser of your existing project. A quick way to do this is to drop the clip onto the timeline. It will automatically appear in the media browser. Check the frame rate of any clip by going to Inspector Info. Go back to the media browser, right click the file and select New Compound Clip. Choose the project's frame rate. The original clip you added first can now be deleted. You don't need it anymore. Then drag the new compound clip to the timeline. OK, let's move on. To properly integrate any type of native FCP mask, you'll need two clips on a timeline. Clip 1, the mask source. Clip 2, the clip you'll be grading. The order of these clips doesn't matter, but for convenience, we place the working clip, clip 2, above the source. Now disable the top, the working clip, so it doesn't get in the way. On the bottom clip, the source, apply a mask. For example, the powerful magnetic mask effect from the effects panel. You can use any of the native masks. Highlight the object and analyze the clip. Now enable the working clip again. Apply a Color Finality Pro mask to it. In the plugins inspector panel, Scroll down to the New Drop Zone section. Choose a mask source, in our case the clip underneath, click on it and hit Apply Clip. If the mask preview appears in the drop zone, you know it's set up correctly. Don't forget to highlight the plugin in Inspector when working with masks. Next, open the Layers panel. Create a new group and, for example, add a Color Wheels layer inside. Increase the brightness so you can clearly see how the mask works. For the group, click Add Mask and select the last icon in the mask menu, FCP Mask. As you can see, the brightness adjustment only affects the masked object. Now let's look at the available settings. Just like with the AI Person Mask, you can select different mask types. The default mask with Blur Control, Contour Mode with Width and Blur, plus contour placement options, inside, center, and outside, and mask and contour, combining both sets of controls. Let's switch back to the default mask mode. It's worth noting, you're not limited to using FCP masks. You can also combine them with Color Finale 2 Pro's own masks. For example, let's add an edge mask in the mask settings and set it to subtract mode to remove part of the masked area. The same principle works with masks like any trackable, rectangle or B-spline mask. So the reason we created a group is that grouping layers is one of the most effective ways to structure color adjustments with masks. You can work both inside and outside the mask. Let's add another color wheels layer and invert the parent mask to grade the areas outside of the masked object. That's a basic workflow for using native Final Cut Pro masks inside Color Finale T Pro. But let's go over some more examples. Once a mask source is added, you can reuse it as many times as you need. One practical way to take advantage of this is by adding a contour around an object. For example, to highlight it in a scene. Let's add a color wheels layer on top of the stack in the layers panel. Increase the shadows, midtones, and highlights until the object turns white. Then apply the FCP mask and then choose the contour mask type. Increase the width to make the stroke visible. Or if you prefer, blur the mask to create a glowing effect around the object. Let's go over a couple of practical ways to use the mask. Here's a nice scene with some fruits on a table. A magnetic mask is already integrated and applied to the fruits. And we're using the mask plus contour mode. Let's add a color wheels layer 
and increase saturation and brightness to make the fruits pop out more. Next, we can apply the Texture EQ tool, which works great as a sharpening aid. Adjust the parameters to taste. Here's before and here's after. Notice how much better the fruits read against the background. Moving on, let's work on the background. Add one more color wheels layer, invert parent mask, lower the brightness and reduce overall saturation just a bit to keep the focus on the fruits. And again, here's the before and after. The next and final example will help us explore the full potential of masks. Here, we have a subject against the background with tones very similar to her skin tone. Normally, if you try to adjust the skin tone, you'll end up affecting the background as well. Let's avoid that. Activate the group with the applied mask. The talent is now isolated, which allows us to adjust the skin tone using six vectors. We'll select the last option, dedicated specifically to skin hue, and fine-tune the parameters until we get the desired result. Very simple and efficient. However, there may be cases where the adjustments also affect the lips or other details with similar tones. In such situations, you can apply an additional mask to isolate only the skin, for example, an HSL mask. But in our specific case, a B-spline mask could also be used to mask and track just the lips. Whichever mask you choose, place it above the FCP mask and switch the mode from Add to Subtract, so both masks work together in tandem. Try the new masking features and all other color grading tools for yourself with a free 7-day trial of Color Finality Pro. Link in the description. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.